Hi, I'm Beth. Let's do an August 2017 wrap up of books that I've read. So I haven't done one of these monthly booktube wrap-up videos before, but what the hey, I'm willing to give it a try. Um, so August was a really good month in books for me. I usually vet the books I read pretty heavily, so there's not really a stinker in the bunch. <laughs> They're all pretty good, so let's get right to it. So number one is Hunger by Roxanne Gay. Technically, I finished this one July 31st, not in August, but I mean, come on, how can I not talk about it? It's that good. In it, the famed feminist um, author Roxanne Gay talks about a nonfiction account of what led her to her current weight situation. It started with a brutal gang rape whenever she was a teen and has led up to just um, some emotional problems, eating disorders. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to read. She's really fearless in how much she lays out for us, the reader. She, um, she gives us pieces of herself that make me just so thankful for, uh, for the gift of her words. So Hunger by Roxane Gay, it's really moving and I think you should read it. Number two is Wishful Drinking by Carrie Fisher. Oh, how I miss Carrie Fisher. She is one of my favorite authors. She's just so funny and acerbic and witty, and she has so many, um, so many one-liners that just stick with me and make me laugh out loud. It's kind of rare that I laugh out loud to books or cry actual tears, but but Carrie Fisher made me laugh out loud. She talks about the electroconvulsive therapy that she did to deal with some of her issues, specifically with her bipolar disorder. And she talks about growing up the mother of Debbie Fisher. She talks about her beautiful daughter, Billy, who she loves, loves, loves. She talks about um, her relationship with Paul Simon, the famed singer. She just goes through a lot of things, all of it with her special brand of wit and charm. It's just such a good book and makes me miss her all the more. Not that I ever knew her personally, but just her words. Number three, The Fifth Letter by Nicola Moriarty. In this book, it's kind of similar to books like um, Truly Madly Guilty or Big Little Lies, which is not a coincidence considering that Nicola Moriarty and Leon Moriarty are sisters. In it, four friends are dealing with a mystery fifth letter that has some um, explicit confessions, could lead to danger. I did a whole video review of this one, so go give it a watch. <laughs> Number four, The Party by Robin Harding. Oh, this one is just painful. It's where there's a sweet 16 party. Even though it deals with teenagers, it's not YA. It's still a book that's for adults. Uh, but there's a, a sweet 16 party for a girl who's kind of trying to be a social climber. So she invites the cool girl to the party and has to make it good. So there are drugs and alcohol and of course bad things happen. And then it's one of those things where um, instead of cleaning up the bad thing, making good from it and moving forward, it just compounds with more and more bad things until just everyone is kind of in the muck. And it's just so messy and painful and fun to read. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say that because it makes it sound like I am gleeful in their pain and I'm not gleeful in their misery, but it's just interesting to see how things compound and just get worse and worse. The party sounds like a load of fun. <laughs> Number five is Baby Doll by Holly Overton. Oh, I hate drawing comparisons between books, but this one is kind of the exact same situation as Room. Um, sorry, <laughs> but it's still a good book. So in it, a girl or a young woman has been kidnapped by a man, held for many years, had a baby while in captivity, and then one day manages to escape with that baby. And so the bulk of the book is dealing with the aftermath of her escape. Um, the conflicted feelings that our families have, that our family has, the guilt, the um, trouble acclimating to this new life, the kid who has trouble acclimating as well, and then um, one thing in particular with with um, Baby Doll is the twin sister and how she deals with all of it. 
So really the main character is the one who was kidnapped, but the twin sister, her life pretty much ended that day as well. She's a broken woman. And so we see her struggle with that and her climb up or attempts to deal with that. Number six, If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This one is YA. So you know how I just said that it's rare that a book makes me cry my own tears or laugh out loud? Well, I've kind of gotten a double whammy this month because this one made me cry ugly tears <laughs> this, this month when I read it. So um, it concerns a girl named Amanda. She is trans. She was born a boy but knew pretty much from the outset that she was really meant to be a girl. So she's had the surgery and everything. She's pretty. She's sweet. She's kind of a, um, she's a character that the author specifically said she was set up to be um, likable and easy to identify with and sympathize with. Not necessarily an amalgam or um, stereotype of what a trans person is or should be but just uh, someone who's very accessible to readers who are maybe a little bit uninitiated to the trans um, <sighs> struggles that they face. It's just, it's heartbreaking, it's wonderful, it's such a good book. I highly recommend it. That's one of my five star favorites. Um, if I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo, give it a read, especially in today's, um, uh, I hate to bring up politics, especially in today's climate in which trans people are kind of um, under the microscope with the military ban. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there and say this gives a human face to um, a big thing that's facing people right now. Number seven, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book is a hoot. <laughs> it's a hoot, but it's also, um, it tugs at the heartstrings as well. So imagine scoring an exclusive interview with Elizabeth Taylor or Anne Bancroft or one of those glamorous um, old movie sirens. So this is kind of the setup in The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Someone gets the, uh, the story of a lifetime in which she gets to have a no-holds-barred interview with Evelyn Hugo and talk about all seven of her husbands, all of those relationships, and who is the true love of her life. Oh, it's so hard for me not to spoil it for you. Number eight, Final Girls by Riley Sager. I actually did a uh, video review of this just last week. So as soon as you're done watching this one, just slide on back to last week's video and check that out. Um, of course, I, I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun. There's murder, mayhem, mystery, all the M's that you can want. Um, so it, it follows Quincy, the main character, who is the final survivor of a mass murder that happened many, many years ago. Well, another final girl who was another final survivor of another mass murder has just uh, shown up dead. And so now there may be danger coming a knocking at Quincy's door. I highly recommend it. I think you'll enjoy it. It kept me guessing up to the very end. Final Girls by Riley Sager. Number nine, The People We Hate at the Wedding by Grant Ginder. So who do we hate at this wedding? Everybody! Everybody is horrible. <laughs> so we follow um, two siblings, Paul and Alice, who just, oh, they're adults and they're just not doing too well in life. They're in failing relationships. They're failing at their jobs. They're just not holding it together very well at all. Meanwhile, they have a fabulous, rich half-sister named Eloise. She's glamorous, she's wonderful, she's poised, and she's getting married in London. So Alice and Paul go up to London to meet up with her, go to the wedding, be part of all the festivities, and then of course family drama ensues. So I had kind of a phenomenon similar to The Nest whenever I read The People We Hate at the Wedding in that I started off um, hate reading this book, not liking these people at all. And really I didn't like them through most of the book either, but still, gosh darn it, despite my best intentions, they still grew on me. <laughs> they grew on me. And so um, the book is a lot of fun.
Why do I keep saying a lot of fun? 10, last but certainly not least, and also another uh, really good entry is Exit West by Mohsin Hamid. Exit West follows two young lovers in love. Um, and I say lovers loosely because they never really consummated. So there's Nadia and Syed, and they, they fall in love. And meanwhile, the city all around them is being torn apart by war. And so eventually the couple have to exit. They have to go somewhere. And so from there, the story gets a little bit um, fantastical in that there are all sorts of doors, heavily guarded doors, but doors which lead to different worlds, different countries, different lives. So who knows what's behind the door? You can kind of see it as an allegory for life. Um, there are all sorts of doors that we could open in life. Some of them, uh, more difficult to open than others, some of them more successful, some of them more scary than others. But getting back to Nadia and Syed, they go through um, all the changes, the homelessness, um, being refugees of war, and it's just... I'm not even quite sure how to explain the book other than to say you should read it. You'll like it. <laughs> So 10 solid book recommendations for August. It was a great reading month for me. So many good things out there and I can't wait to read even more next month. Thanks for tuning in to my first monthly wrap up video. Usually I've done mainly just book reviews and book recommendations, but I'm happy to branch out and try new things. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all next time. Bye.